The reality is that 9 out of 10 children either suck a pacifier or a finger or thumb. Jill Borsky gave her son Drew his first pacifier when he was a week old. He took to it right away. I, I, mean, I actually have a lot of pictures of him with this pacifier in his mouth and it looks so big compared to his face when they're that little. Like many children, Drew seemed to take comfort in his pacifier. And although he uses it less frequently today than he did a year ago, it's still a regular part of his routine. I figure if it's something that soothes him and helps him you know, manage pain or, or fussiness, then it's a good thing for him. Some parents are concerned that continual pacifier use will harm their child's teeth. They may even have noticed that the child's front teeth on the top have begun to lie forward, and the ones on the bottom have begun to lie backwards. Is this cause for concern? That's not a bad thing because when you stop the habit, it tends to relapse on its own, so we really don't get too alarmed about that. The one thing to remember is that it's much more important to have a healthy child psychologically than it is to have a child with healthy teeth. Pacifiers come in almost as many sizes, shapes, and colors as the children who use them. How do you choose the one that's right for your child? First of all, Look for one that's sized correctly according to your child's age. As for shape... Studies have shown conclusively that the shape of the nipple really does not have an impact on the amount of misalignment. So find one that your child likes. Safety is a concern as well. It may seem an obvious point, but check to make sure that the pacifiers you buy have no small parts that could break off and present a choking hazard. You usually get what you pay for, so it's, it's a good investment and it's a safe one. Once your child is taken to a particular pacifier, the challenge becomes keeping it clean. I throw them in the dishwasher. Um, when he was really little, I would boil them on the stove in a pot of water, and every so often I would just throw them out and get him new ones. So, um, yeah, because they kind of can pick up germs, so. I always had a stash of them with me. <laughs> Parents who want to keep a pacifier clean and accessible may be tempted to tie it to their child's wrist or clothing. Dr. Hale makes a point to warn all of his patients about this. Don't do that. That's a no-no okay. because you can, you, you can, you never know what position a child is going to end up in and you can, you know, cut off blood circulation or airways or things like that. They do have little clips on some of them that uh, are kind of elastic and with those you don't want them to be over like six inches long and then they can clip. But the best, the best bet is just to avoid that altogether. At what point should a child stop using a pacifier? There is no well-defined cutoff date. On average, eight out of 10 children stop by about age three. But pediatricians don't generally become concerned until a child reaches four and a half. There really is no reason for a parent to, to take away a pacifier prematurely from a child. They, they, they may need that. There are reasons that these children have these, these sucking habits. They do it when they're bored. They do it when they're stressed for comforting. I think once he transitions from a crib into a bed, that that's probably a point in time where he'll be old enough where I can also reason with him that now that you're in a big boy bed, you don't need your pacifier anymore. Since it's part of mainly his bedtime routine, I think that would make the most sense for us.